Um, my, re my reaction is that uh, I, I was pleased to see some of the records released. There's no question about that, but I'm disappointed that not all of the records have been released in full. I really think it's time to release everything. Uh, as long as there is some information held back, there's going to be suspicions about uh, conspiracy theories and everything else. I will tell you that the review board, which worked very hard from 1994 to 1998 to review uh, all of the records which were required to be disclosed to us, and obviously we are seeing records now that were not disclosed to the review board in the 1990s, whether through negligence or uh, intentional. Uh, but the review board anticipated a full release of everything by 2017. And I think the Congress anticipated a full release of all of the records by 2017, the 25 year anniversary of the 1992 act. I mean, Congress made a determination in 1992 that all of these records, if they had any relationship whatsoever uh, to the assassination, uh, carry a presumption of immediate disclosure. And only in the rarest of circumstances should redactions stay in place. These are records related to the assassination of an American president, and they carry an enormous public interest. Um, this congressional mandate uh, occurred in 1992, and that's a long time ago. Uh, the assassination was 59 years ago. That's a long time ago. It's time to release everything and, and stop uh, with the redaction process. The issue of informants, which apparently is still uh, an issue of great concern to the agencies, we issued guidelines in the 1990s about informants. And we required an agency to prove to us that uh, an informant was still living. And secondly, even if they were still living, that they would come to some immediate harm or serious harm. Uh, that was a standard that most agencies could not prove. And most of those informants' names were released. Uh, even when there was proof that an informant was living, uh, we set a date after which uh, we presumed the, the informant would no longer be living and set a release date. The extent that there are informants who are still living and at risk uh, now, uh, so many years after the event, uh, seems highly unlikely to me. And sources and methods have changed radically. And I, I think that uh, most sources and methods uh, from the 1960s are well known today and no longer need to be protected. Um, and and I, I am concerned about the, the appearance of records that were not disclosed to the review board. The law required all assassination related records to be disclosed to the review board for our review and determination what could be released and what needed uh, to be protected. And we uh, released and declassified you know, nearly all of the records with very few redactions. I think it's necessary at this point because we still face uh, these issues of protection of, of information that uh, the Congress hold a hearing and uh, perhaps even more than one. And let's get this issue out on the table and, and determine why 25 years after the fact, we're still seeing significant redactions in records that for all practical purposes should have been released a long time ago. So I'm hoping that the Congress will react to the latest round of non-disclosures with a hearing to fully explore why the 1992 law is not being followed. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Tunheim. So you, you heard Jeff's presentation. You also heard Judge Tunheim uh, make the announcement just now. He's calling for congressional hearings uh, to overlook and oversee this process which is currently in non-compliance with what the 2017 law was. So if there's any questions for Jeff, Judge Tunheim, or Larry Schnaff, who is the counsel on behalf of the Mary Farrell Foundation initiated in the lawsuit against President Biden, we'll be happy to entertain any questions at this time. Just unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and ask your question if you have one. Uh, 
I, I will just add while we're getting questions that um, we um, had got a bunch of uh, historians, lawyers, researchers, open government types to sign a letter to Carolyn Maloney back in July, asking her to hold an oversight hearing. She was the she is was the chair of the oversight committee at the time, um, but there was no appetite um, to have an oversight hearing, uh, you know, before the midterms. So now we have a change in administration uh, in control of the House, uh, and uh, James Comer will be the chair. So he's the one that you may want to direct your questions to about oversight hearings. I just want to correct that I'm co-counsel. Bill okay. Simpson is my co-counsel. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions for Jeff, Judge Tunheim, or Larry? Uh, I have I have one question for Judge Tunheim. Um, Can you identify uh, yourself? Yes. Uh, my name is Chad Nagel. I'm a I'm a freelance uh, journalist and uh, a non-practicing attorney and and communications consultant in the in the D.C. area, and uh, hugely interested in this topic uh, for about the last five years. Um, and and often I, I'm sorry. Go ahead with your question, Chad. Thank you. Okay. So often it comes up in discussions with people who are also interested that all of the uh, documents in question have already been seen by one or another member of the uh, Assassination Records Review Board and therefore this is no big deal. I mean, ultimately people have to concede that the law is the law, but they say there's nothing to see. And the, and the point naturally comes up that there's a difference between what is in the collection and what is withheld in full. And the Mary Farrell Foundation has obviously focused publicly on 44 documents that are withheld in full related to a particular CIA officer. But, but actually other reports say there are hundreds of documents that are still outside the collection. Is it the case that the ARB actually did see or actually was able to study these documents or was it not a proper review and it was just a cursory glance and and the documents were were then withheld or, or or withdrawn, or did you actually never see uh, the, the contents of these documents properly? Thank you, Chad. Judge Sonner. Uh It's a good question, Chad. Uh, you know, some of the documents obviously we we saw, and uh, we we did do redactions on some records, and on the basis of the uh, agency's fairly detailed response uh, to our questions. But there were some records that I'm seeing now that we did not see that were not turned over to us for one reason or another. I don't know why. Uh, part of it is just record keeping and the inability to find records from that era. But there are some cases in which I believe the review board and its staff was misled uh, about the importance of certain records. At the end of the review board in 1998, remember, we were a temporary agency. We really only had four years and nothing more to do our work. And at the end, things were coming through fast and we had to rely on representations from agencies. And that's where there was some significant misrepresentation as to the importance of, of certain records and whether they were truly related to the assassination or not. Uh, so. I think the, the, the final answer to this is that everything should be released and then we won't have any questions about uh, what were, when we were misled or what we were misled about. I, I would add that um, our lawsuit uh, has a count to uh, require an, uh, an order having the National Archives, A, uh, there were a lot of outstanding search requests when the ARC went out of business. So we want them to complete the agency to complete those search requests and be complete new searches, which is obvious from from what happened last week that there's, you know, we have questions about whether this collection is the complete collection. So I, I noticed that we've had a couple of other um, reporters join us since the commencement of the conference. Are there any other additional questions for either Judge Tunheim, for Jefferson Morley, or for Larry Schnau? I have a question. All right, go ahead, Chuck. 
Sure, I'm Chuck Ocelli. I'm from Ocelli.com Broadcast and radio host, producer, and uh, that's what I do. Anyway, for Judge Stewart, I wonder if you would care to comment, sir, about the progress related to not government agencies, but those which are possibly agencies or organizations that might still have things in their holding. For instance, uh, the JFK Presidential Library, the Kennedy family, uh, which may still have uh, relevant records in hand. And if you care to comment about the progress of that all these years later after the uh, after the uh, sunset of the existence of the board, if there's uh, anything that you'd like to say about that, sir. Well, Chuck, we work very closely with the JFK Library, um, uh, as closely as we possibly could. And we actually facilitated uh, review and release of records that really went beyond the assassination, just uh, to get records out to the American public. Um, and we did work with the Kennedy family to a certain extent as well, although we had little uh, power or authority over those records other than to encourage full release. I'm not sure what's been done recently. Uh, the National Archives uh, includes uh, the JFK Library as well, so the archives would be probably the best place to ask that question about what's being done about still uh, non-disclosed records at the JFK Library. And Chuck, there's an important uh, potential piece of evidence that NBC is holding about whether Oswald was on the first floor or the sixth floor at the time of the shooting. Um, NBC, it's called the Darnell film, and uh, they will not, uh, researchers have asked to try to get it uh, analyzed with software to see whether we could actually tell that was Oswald and not on the first floor. The notes of Dr. Frit, uh, that um, uh, Fritz, Captain Fritz had in, uh, taken when he was interviewing Oswald in custody Oswald said he was sitting, you know, watching the parade, standing watching the parade. And that was taken as just one of many lies he told that day. But this rec this film could actually help answer that question. And NBC is, is holding it and will not allow it to be um, analyzed. And that's an example of not only government agencies, but the media is also complicit in Thank you. Any other additional questions for our panel? All right, well, on that note, we wanna thank you all for participating. Uh, if you have any additional questions or follow-up, you can always, of course, uh, engage Jefferson Morley. You can reach him at 202-413-7841 or DM him on Twitter at Jefferson Morley for additional follow-ups. Thank you all for participating and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Judge Sunheim. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you all.